we have to think it not robbery to be equal with him or to be in submission to him, in agreement with him, so that he can be Christ in us. Are we understanding that? Are we understanding that? And saints, it starts out with this agreement, this agreement. What does it start out with? It starts out with us hearing the word of God and agreeing with the word. Agreeing with the word of God. I was in, um, let me, and see, it is, God always has an example. He always has an example of what he's, what he's trying to teach us. He's always, he'll let there be some living examples of the opposition. You see, when this word comes, as I was sharing with the ministers earlier, when this word comes forth, the, the, and remember this, don't forget this, Ricky, don't forget this. Don't forget this, don't forget this, Clifton. When, 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 when God takes you deeper into the word of God and you get a deeper revelation of the word of God, the deeper, the more understanding you get of the word of God, the more subtle the operation of the enemy is. The more subtle becomes his operation. That's why discerning spiritual operations is so valuable. You have to know how to discern spiritual operations. You have to know how to discern the void. You have to know how to discern what the enemy is doing in light of the message, in light of the knowledge that you have. So the greater your knowledge, the more you learn, the more God enlightens you, the more subtle the operation of the enemy is going to be. But if you're in tune with God and you're in agreement with God, you'll be able to see that subtle operation. You'll be able to identify everything that's not Christ. And that's what Paul was doing. That's what Paul was doing when, when uh, he had to deal with, with, um, with leaders that came in and, and tried to usurp uh, his authority in the church or, or undermine his teachings and, and uh, his people were exposed to these leaders. And he said to them, said, they say that they are Christ, but I'm Christ. We're Christ too. And we, in other words, we know what Christ is because he's in us. And we know what that operation is. And, when, and we know when we're not looking at Christ, you see. And so how do we get there? How do we get to a place where we're equal with God in the sense that we agree with him? We totally agree with God. It's not going to start with God uh, you know, we're, we're not, it's not going to start with God just speaking to you out of the sky. He's not going to get up off the throne and just talk to you every day to guide you. No. The first, the first place God is going to use to guide you is his word. His word. If you're not in agreement with God's word, you're not in agreement with God. You've got to be in agreement with God's word. Now, it's easy. You think, well, you know, I'm in agreement with God's word. Well, let's see. Are you really in agreement with God's word? Um, I was in a fast track, and I was teaching. What was I teaching? I was teaching. I think I taught it here, too. Uh, I might have taught it here. I, I teach everywhere, so I don't know. I don't know what one day is from the next, to tell you the truth, or one country to the next. Amen. But uh, I was teaching... Did I teach the seventh chapter of Romans here? About the marriage? Yes. I did? Okay. Well, I was teaching that, and, and uh, um, there were some, 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 some pastors that, that, that were caught up in using this in their marriage, you know, things. And, I, and I, this is the whole direction. This is the, this is the whole premise of the fast track that... That, that I was teaching last week. It came from this perspective. And, and so one of the ladies, she said, well, when you start teaching on that marriage, my, both, all my ears open up. She sounded like she had more than two. But they, she said, so, it, this was a pastor. But now, it, it, um, because it, they were challenged and, and, and I'm gonna, I can use this as an example. I want to use this as an example of how you how you can hear a word because these people heard a word that they said, wow, that's, that's God. That's God. And they knew that it was the word of God. They knew it was the word of God. But uh-oh, I got to Romans 7. 
I got to Romans 7 where, they, where some of them had been teaching Romans 7 as the marriage laws for the church. And, and so they, it's like they put on brakes right there. They, everything else was God but that. <laughs> everything else they heard God and everything I said until I got right there. Then all of a sudden it wasn't God. Um, and so the question was, the, 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 the anti-belief here was that uh, this was the marriage, this was the law for the church. And I boldly, you know me, I just boldly stated that it wasn't, <laughs> you know, in my teaching. Uh, and I began to realize something. Now, I'm going to show you something. This is what I did when, it was, when I was challenged as to, to whether this was the law for the church. Um, I went here, and I want, I want you to judge something. I want you to judge this for yourselves, okay? Can you guys judge this? Yes. Amen. Let's go to Romans 7. Because if you're going to know God, if you're going to know God in this message, if you're going to um, glorify Jesus, if you're going to allow Jesus to be glorified, you must agree with the word, even if it contradicts your belief system, even if it contradicts things that you have believed up to now. Amen? Glory to God. Um, Romans 7 says, Know ye not, brethren, then he puts something in parenthesis here. I speak to them that know what? The law. The law. The law. The law. Um, let, me, let me show you Paul's attitude about the law in the church. Can I show you his attitude about the law in the church? Hold this and go to Corinthians. Um, wow. Oh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians. 2 <laughs> Corinthians, I was just looking at something else. I got distracted there for a moment. Um, let's go to 2 Corinthians, the, is it 14 chapter? Uh, let's see. Oh, dear. The lights went out. Let's see, uh, let me try to find the best scripture here. I think I might have, uh, it's a 30, I think I'm in, I think it's in 1 Corinthians. First, it's in 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. Get the lights back on, guys. Thank you. Uh, let's go to First uh, Corinthians 14. I want to show you Paul's disposition about the law. If you look here at the 30, fourth verse.
Can we go to the 34th verse? 1 Corinthians 14, 34. It says, let your women do what? Keep silent square. For it is not permitted unto them to do what? But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith what? All right. Hello? Now, if you take that scripture, right? Paul said, let the women be silent, because that's what the law say. Let them be silent where? Not at home, where? In the church. In the church. Let them be silent in the church, because that's, that's what the law say. So we, we need to do the same thing that the law tell us to do. Hello? So that means that I should not be ministering now. If I'm going to follow the law, what the law said about women in the church, then women should not be preaching. They should not be teaching. They should, hello, they need to keep silent. If you're going to take this scripture, hello, if you're going to take this scripture as we just read it, then all of us women need to shut our mouths when we come to church. And nobody runs the service, ministers in the church except the men, the brothers. What am I, why, why did I go here? Because when you when you give an explanation of scripture, it must be given in light of all scripture. Don't you ever forget that. It has to be rendered in light of all scripture. And that's why people with intellect cannot interpret the Bible. You got to have spiritual revelation to interpret scripture. In fact, scripture interprets scripture. You can't leave it to people because people will make this say what they want it to say. And look how many churches have pulled this scripture from right here and silenced their women. They have silenced their women based upon this scripture. And so you go into a lot of churches and women are not allowed to preach. You know, I was in this seminar uh, that I did last week. There was some preachers there that did not believe in women ministers. But boy, they were floored at the end of that, at the end of that seminar. They, they, because I said, now, you know, what sayest thou? It's just the word of God. What else are we gonna say? It's the word of God. What you're preaching is the word of God. Bears witness with the spirit. And these brothers came up to me and said, it's just the word of God. The word that you have preached, the word has come alive now. You, you know, you mean from a woman? Because they take this scripture and yoke their women with it. They took their women back under the law. Are you hearing me? They took their women back under the law. And so, and you, and you may ask, well, Doc, that's what it says. It says, let them be silent as thus saith the law. Well, if you stop reading there, that's what it says. But if you read the next verse, because Paul was writing to them, answering the questions that they had sent to him, right? So he says, let them keep silent as thus saith the law. And if they'll learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. So what happens if I don't have a husband? Or a daddy. My daddy may be dead and never been married. I'm just going to be a dummy. For it is a shame for a woman to speak where? <laughs> That's the law. The law had these women where they could not speak. Speak in the church. They couldn't say anything, especially the Jewish. The Jewish law, the women weren't even allowed to sit with the men in church. It was the men that received the law and the men that discussed it and the men that ministered it and men that read from the Torah, not the women. They were even separated in seating. So now he says here, but Paul says, what's that, what that 35th, 36th verse says? <laughs> Oh, 
came the word of God out from you or came it to you only? Did, you, did this thing start with you? Are you the one that sent the word out? And then when it did come out, did it just come from you? If God sent it, did he just send it to you, brother? Are you hearing God? So now if you stop right there in the 34th verse and the 35th verse, you'll, you'll silence all the women. You'll do what the law says. But Paul was a man, Paul was a man that didn't believe in mixing the law with the spirit. He said, you can't go back and rebuild the things that have been torn down. Jesus nailed the ordinances in the law to the cross. Amen. So how do you take the church now and put the church back under the law? You can't do that. You can't do that. that the, the law, we couldn't keep it no way. And then if you're going to take me and put me back up on the part of it, you got to put me on the all of it. All of it. Put, a, put the veil on my head and all of that stuff. You, get, you gotta do it all. You can't do part of the law. You gotta do the whole law. And see, see when, 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 when now, when if, if, if a man has his, has his women silent in the church and, and he's using that scripture and then I take him here to his very same scripture that he's using and show him what Paul said in the next two verses after that and that's, and he, and he still does not change his doctrine because now what are you going to do with the scripture that says in the last days I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters will do what? Prophesy. Where did they prophesy at? In the church. There's no way a woman is going to be silent and prophesying at the same time. Come on. He poured it out on all what? Flesh. Why? Because all is Christ. All flesh is Christ. There's no male, female, yeah, hello, bond, free, Jew or Greek, but all is who? Christ. So now if I take this preacher to that, those scriptures, and he doesn't change his doctrine toward his women, then I have to ask him a question. Why isn't the scripture enough? Why isn't the scripture? If he, if he doesn't change his doctrine on women ministering in the church, it's because he has an agenda. He has an agenda, and he needs to use the word of God to put the women in bondage to work his agenda. And that's just real. When the word of God, this, this is discipleship, right? When the word of God speaks plainly and it's not enough, it's because your agenda is contrary to God's. It has to be. Because God's word should be enough. God's word is enough to where if I'm ministering something and, I, and somebody show, it, show me something different in the word, I got to back up off of what I was ministering. I got to say, hey, I was wrong. God has instructed me more perfectly. Did, isn't that what happened to Apollos? They had to sit him down and instruct him more perfectly. Glory to God. So if, if Apollos could be off and, and, and Paul came up and rebuked Peter, he was off course with circumcision and all that stuff. Glory to God. And he was a chief apostle to the Jews. If they can be off course, I could be off too. So if you come and straight me with the word of God, not with your opinion now, but it's got to be the word of God. If you straight me with the word of God, the word of God got to be enough. And if that's not enough, I got a private agenda. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? If I won't entertain the word that you bring to me, if, if, if you bring me a word that is contrary to what I believe and I won't entertain it, it's because I have a private agenda. And if I entertain that word, it will contradict my agenda or hinder my agenda. And I will not let anything into my brain, anything into my heart that's going to be contrary to my agenda, even the word of God. 
I cannot let the word of God come in there and, 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 and shake up my agenda. Do you understand what I'm saying? We t we're talking about glorifying Christ so that God can be glorified through him. Are, are, you, are, you, are you hearing God? Amen. So now let's go back to Romans, Romans 7. He said, now I speak to those that know the law, right? How that the law, who? Has dominion. Who has dominion? So, <laughs> the law has dominion? The law has dominion? As long as he what? Lives. So now, he set the stage. He's setting the stage. He's saying, I'm going to use the Jewish law. And I was, when you do the, the history on this, uh, this church was in Rome, but there were an awful lot of Jews in that church. A lot of Jews in that church at Rome. A lot of Jews that had been converted to, Jude to uh, Christianity in the church at Rome. Just read up on your history of it. And that's why he said, I'm talking to you, you guys, because some of y'all are elders here in the church. So I'm talking to you elders that know the law. Let me give you an example. See, he's using the law as an example for them. He's not trying to take the law and bring them back up under the law. He just rebuked Peter for that. Hello? He rebuked Peter for trying to put him under the law of circumcision. That's why I say if you're going to go up under the law, you've got to go up under all of it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You got to silence the women. All the men got to be circumcised. But we don't talk about that. Now, the brothers will silence the women by the law, but they don't, they don't go back and say, well, we all us got to be circumcised then. Glory <laughs> <laughs> God. Amen. You never hear that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Somebody say, make these scriptures right, dog. Make them right. Raise your two. But notice what he says, and I'm going to show you something else here. He says, the law has dominion over man as long as he lives, right? For the woman which has a husband is bound by the law. Bound by the what? Law. Bound by the what? Law. law. How long? As long as he what? As long as that man lives, that woman is bound to him. Doesn't matter if he live in cross town. Doesn't matter if he living in the house. He can be living in China. And she can be living in Peru. She bound to him. Isn't that what this is saying? She is bound to him as long as he live. But if the husband be dead, she's loose from the law of her husband. Now, so just to make my point here, I want, I want you to, to see how I was trying to instruct this woman, and I'm trying to instruct you, that the word got to be sufficient. The word truth must be sufficient for you, and if, and if truth is not sufficient, then you have an agenda. Amen? When you cannot accept truth. And so, I, so now, look at this. Let's read this scripture again. For the woman which has a husband is bound by the law. The law binds her to her husband as long as her husband is alive. So it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. If you get separated, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are, you're still bound as long as that man is alive. Isn't this what this scripture is saying? Glory to God. So now, hold that and turn over here to 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter. All right, look at the 13th verse, 1 Corinthians 7 and 13. It says, and, it, and the woman which has a husband that believe not, he's not a believer, she's saved and he's not. And if he be pleased to dwell with her let, her, let her not leave him. Don't leave a man because he's not saved. 
Now, what book are we in? And who is he writing to? The church. Who is he writing to in the, in the book of Romans? So both of these letters are to the church. Now, we got to determine something. Whether Paul said one thing to the church at Rome and something different to the church at Corinth. Now, watch what he says here. For, number 14, the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. But if the unbelieving depart, whether it be the man or the woman, let him what? Let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. So what is he saying? If that unbeliever leaves, let him leave, and you're no longer bound. Not to be in bondage mean I'm not bound. Is that right? You can marry it. Oh, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> now, I was using this as an example for salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. But well, somebody taking advantage of this law for the church. Somebody say, ooh, I'm so glad she's teaching this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So what does bondage mean? Does it mean the same thing as bound? And notice what it says in the 16th verse. Let me show you why he said you're no longer bound. He said, for what knoweth thou? How do you know? That's another way of saying, how do you know? O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband. Or how knoweth thou, O man, whether thou art going to save thy wife? How you know whether they're going to save or not? So if the unbeliever depart, do what? Let him. You're no longer bound. But now, is that not contrary to what Paul said over here in, in Rome? He said, if the, he said, the law says, if it, that woman is bound as long as that man lives. Didn't he say that? But then now when he gets to the Corinthian church, he says, if the man depart, if he's an unbeliever and he departs, he leaves the marriage, let him go or let her go. You are no longer bound. One says you're bound for life under any situation. And one says if he unbelieving and he depart or she depart, you're not bound. Hello? So which one is the law for the church? Which one is the marriage you know, it's marriage for the church. Because Paul said, he said, now I speak this. He said, this is not the Lord, but this is me. He said, but I think I got the spirit of the Lord. <laughs> Hello? And if, believe me, if God didn't like it, then agree with Paul, he would never let him print it. He wouldn't have put this in print. Yes, Jackie, question? Continue, but um, go back and, and also bring in verse... 10 and verse 11. Right, that's what I just did. No, you, you were down. For that's what I just said. I said that Paul said that, that to the rest of this is me. Well, I read it. It says, no, in verse 10 says, And unto the merit I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband, but, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. So what he's saying is that if you, if you just jump up and you married and, and, and you save, and, and you, you, I can't just jump up and say, I'm just going to leave my husband because I don't like him no more. So I'm just going to leave him. I'm just going to leave him. He wants to live with me. He, he, he wants to stay with me, but I want to go. He's saying, now, you, you saved. You're supposed to be able to bear some things. So you don't just jump up and just leave the man and the man in love with you and want to stay with you. He said a Christian woman shouldn't do that. That's, that's what that said. He said you don't just jump up and leave him, but if you do, now this is, what, this is, this is the mind of God. He said now if you do, you better be leaving him for Christ's sake. 
And how do I know you leaving him for Christ's sake? Because there are situations where, let's say, there are situations where a husband may be abusive about a wife being saved or coming to the church, don't want her to come to the church, don't want her to, to serve God, don't want her to be out there with those people they call Christians and all that stuff. He may be of a different religion, and he doesn't, he is not in agreement with what she's in. And so she pull out, and she said, well, I, I got to get out of this. Jesus said, if you pull out of that marriage now, it better be for Christ's sake. So if you coming out, and he wants to remain with you, if, he, if he's pleased to dwell with you, even though you are born again, but he's, he said, okay, all right, I'll handle, I can handle that. But now if, if, if you can't handle it, that's where he's going. He said, if you can't handle being married to an unsaved man, because some women just want to divorce their husband because they ain't saved. Well, he said, if you want to do that, then you be, you be married to Christ. You leave him, you stay unmarried, so that you can be married to Christ, because you say, you claim you're leaving him for Christ's sake. You can't just jump up and just leave your husband and say, well, I don't, he's not saved, so I'm going I'm to I'm divorce him and go marry me a saved man. He said, you don't do that, and the man want to live with you. But now if he's antagonistic, and he want, uh, he's abusive, and he's a hindrance to your ministry, and the fact that he's just abusive to it, and you want to work your ministry, and you want to serve the Lord, and he won't let you do it. And you say, well, later for you, brother. And so you can leave him, but you got to stay single. You got to stay single. Unless you go back and reconcile with him. You can go back to him, but you can't go and marry another man. If you're leaving him for the gospel's sake, for Christ's sake, you got to be leaving him for Christ's sake. And how do you prove that? I'm married to Christ now. I don't want no hindrance because to be married now puts me in submission to another man. He may put some requirements on it. So I just can't separate from this one, trying out this one here. And I find out a year later, no, he just as bad as the other one. So I'm going to leave him and go get another one. <laughs> and then he ain't right, and I'm going to leave him and go get another one. He said, don't do that. If you're leaving for Christ's sake, then stay unmarried. Huh? Stay unmarried unless you go back and reconcile to him. That's what that means. Are you, are you hearing God? If he wants to dwell with you, but if he don't want to dwell with you, if he leave you, you ain't bound. That's the scripture. Is that right? Did I just read that? He's saying that if, if that man, that unbeliever, even it could be a woman. It don't have to be a man. It could be the, the other way around, the wife. He said if the unbeliever depart now, you're no longer bound. You're no longer bound. But he said, if the believing husband or the believing wife, the unbelieving husband or the unbelieving wife wants to dwell with you, doesn't want to leave the marriage because you got born again, then you stay in the marriage. But if, he, but if you just can't stay in it because for Christ's sake, then, then let it be for Christ's sake. Then you marry to Christ then, unless you go back to your husband. Do you? You understand? Yes, ma'am. Now, I, I ain't come here to preach no marriage. Go ahead, Hazel. Yes, ma'am. That's what he mean by not bound. When you're not bound, he say you're free to be married to another. So you, when, when you're not under bondage, you can, you're free. You can do what you want to do. You can stay single or you can marry someone else. If, if, you're, if an unbelieving husband depart, glory to God, because you're born again, or he's not pleased to dwell with you, or he just find him another woman. And he goes to that other woman, the scriptures say you're no longer bound. You can marry someone else. Now you may not want to marry nobody else. You may decide that I'm going to stay right here and wait on my husband to come back. Glory to God, he may, be, he may stay with that woman 20 years, but I'm going to wait to... 21, year 21, because he's coming back to me. That's your privilege. That's your privilege. But what God is saying, you don't have to. He's saying you're free now. So what does freedom mean? Freedom means I'm free to remain unmarried if I want to, or I'm free to marry if I want to. That's what freedom means. Do you understand that? That's not really hard, is it? 
That's not difficult. The scriptures are very plain about that. Amen. And so what we have to be careful of, I was sharing this with someone not long ago, what we have to be careful of, um, um, what we have to be careful of is charging God with certain aspects of this that, that, that he didn't say in here. For instance, if, if I'm married to, a, to an unbelieving spouse and he, he, he decides he wants another woman, and so he leave me and go with the other woman, but he didn't divorce me, but he left me, and he's with another woman. He's, he's, he's in fornication. He's not pleased to dwell with me. He left. So I'm what? I, I'm what? According to the scripture, I'm what? I'm free. I'm no longer bound. I can divorce him. But if I tell you, if I say to you, God, because I shared this with someone, if, 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 if I say to you, God say I can't divorce him, then I make God a liar right here. I make him a liar. You, and if I make him, if, if God told me that, you can't trust nothing else he say, because he lied. You can't trust nothing else God say in this book. If he tell me that my husband can walk out, out of my life and go and, and, and shack up with another woman, and I can't get a divorce, it's unlawful for me to get a divorce, then he just lied. And we can't make God a liar. He's not going to be a liar. Now, in my heart, in my heart, I may feel like I don't want to divorce my husband. That's lawful for me. I don't care what he did. He can go out there and be a mass murderer. He can go out there and be a pimp. He can have a thousand women. But in my heart, I love him. I want him. I'm going to wait on him. That's fine. God don't have no problem with that. But God don't say, don't say, I told you to do it. Don't say, I forbid you to go marry again. Don't say, I forbid you to divorce him. Because if you say, I say you couldn't divorce him, you make me a liar. You make me a liar because my word says totally different. You understand what I'm saying? And see, that, this is what God is saying about being equal with God. I mean, agree with him. Whatever his word says, agree with that. Agree with what the word says. Because you know what? Whatever, God knows the desires of our heart. You know, God said something to me, amen, through the word of God. He said this, and see, I take the word of God as God talking to me. Yeah. You know, when I read the word, I, I, I read it as if my dad is just talking straight to me. But this is what he uses to talk to me most of the time. And, and you know, he said something to us. He said, I can do abundantly above all thou mayest think, ask, or think. He said, I know what you're thinking. I know what you want to ask me. I know what your desires are, and I can do more than that. Exceedingly abundantly more. So what is he trying to tell us? My word is sufficient. Just follow this word. I already know what your desires are. I know what your wants are. But you know what? You're going to stop me from blessing you if you pervert my word. You'll cut off your blessing by perverting my word. Because you can't take my word and twist it and turn it and, and, and shape it and mold it into your desire. You can't do that. Because when you do that, you perverted it and you expect me to sanction that. So you're cutting your own blessing off. When I would have given you your heart's desire, I can't do it now. Because you perverted my word. You, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I, I wanted to ask you, Doc, if in doing so, that is what it means to handle the word of God deceitfully. Yes, it, it, you're handling the word deceitfully, but the, the twist in it is that you're handling it to yourself deceitfully. See, you, you deceive yourself with it first, and then you'll pass that deceit on to other people. See, if you... If, if, if you I don't know why are we talking about marriage. Well, anyway, if you come, in, if you if if, if your if your wife just hypothetical, please, high, real hypothetical. 
But if, if Carlene decides to leave you for another man, that's real hypothetical. <laughs> you don't even want to think about that, right? But if she decides to leave you for another man, right? And uh, she said, well, I don't believe in this stuff no more. I don't want to be married to you because you, as long as you stay in that mess, I don't believe in that stuff, and I'm getting out of here. So she's becoming an unbeliever. She make herself an unbeliever. So she departs, and she goes out there and starts living with another man. She departed, but she didn't, she didn't divorce you. But she went out there, and she got married to another, I, I mean, shacked up with another man. Now, if you come to me and say, Doc, the Lord say I can't divorce her. I'm, I'm going to say to you, George, you may not want to divorce her, but God didn't tell you that. Because if God told you that, he got to tell all us that. If God say you can't divorce your wife, then I got to tell Ricky if she does the same thing, he can't divorce her. I got to tell Rule if his wife does the same thing, he can't divorce her. I got to tell... Uh, Clifton, if his wife does the same thing, he can't divorce her. Because, see, now, it, if I read this scripture where he said, you're no longer bound. He said, you're, if, she, if she leave, you're not bound. I can say, George, it may be in your heart to wait on your wife to return. But don't say God told you that you were still bound to her. Because the scripture frees you. You understand what I'm saying? Now, let me show you something. If you hold on, let me show you the danger of that. See, God, you're not going to change God. He said, I change not. So God deal with us straight up, and that straight up mean according to his word. So now, if it, the danger in that is if you, if you hold fast to, well, well God said I can't divorce. God says, uh, uh, you know, Divorce is not I, can't, it's not, I can't do it. You won't let me do it. So now, if, if God has commanded you not to divorce, or you say he's commanded you not to divorce, and it's clearly against what he says in, in um, 1 Corinthians 7 chapter. It's clearly, clearly against that. So now, <clears throat> what is happening here? You're taking the word of God, and you're perverting it because you're taking a stance in the name of the Lord. You're putting the Lord's name on your stance. Right? You understand what I'm saying? You're, you're, that's, just like, that's just like me going to the, to the, to the NCB. Y'all going to make call NCB? Me going down the NCB, robbing the bank and saying, God told me to do it. When I, there's a scripture here say, thou should not steal. That's, it's the same exact thing. So now, <laughs> it, and, I, and my excuse is, I went down there, God told me to go and rob the bank so that I could finance a ministry over in Africa because they didn't have no money. And so, so <laughs> you know, so I'm not going to get caught. I'm not going to prison for this because God wanted me to do that. No. God know how to get me the money to send to Africa without me breaking his law to do it. I'm not, he, I'm not gonna have to go and steal nothing to do what it is that God want me to do. So now what I'm saying to you is that, so if, if, if now God sanctions me in the, in the robbery, if he sanctions me in the robbery, he has, he has sanctioned my sin. I have perverted his word because the word says thou shall not steal. But if God back me up, then he's no longer immutable. The scriptures say the immutability of God is that he cannot lie. <laughs> Hello? So, so now if you hold your stance, this is the danger in it. If you hold your stance, you have perverted the word of God. You have perverted God's word. And, when, and God takes this view. God said, now I know what's in your heart. I know you would want Carlene to come back. And I am able to bring Carlene back. But I cannot bring Carlene back inside of your perversion. I can't do that because then I would have sanctioned the lie that you told on me. 
you, 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 you understand what I'm saying? I can't do it. I can't do that. So I have to keep Carlene away from you. No matter how I look, glory to God, it may even look like she's coming back. She may even start talking to you and being nice to you and whatnot, but God ain't going to let her come back. He cannot let her come back as long as you have, have labeled or put his name on something that's contrary to his word. Because then she can't trust it. I can't trust it. I can't read the word and, and just trust what it says because he broke that word with you. And he did it just for you. You see, he's going to break it just for you. So you, I, can't, I can't trust what's written here anymore. And God would never do that. He would never do that. So what is he doing? What is he saying? He's saying, George, I know you want your wife. I, I know how to bring her back. I can bring her back. You can't even get her back, but I, can, I, know how to, I know how to bring her back. But I cannot bring her back under those circumstances. As long as you're perverting my word, I cannot bring her back. Is that right, prophetess? Amen. You, you, we're, we're not going to, to blackmail God. You know. Okay. Same chapter. Same chapter. Seven, seven and twenty. Who sent this? First Corinthians seven and twenty. It says, "Let every man ab abide in the same calling wherein he was called." If you have to go back up to the eighteenth verse. Is any man being called, being called being circumcised, let him not become uncircumcised. If any man is called uncircumcision, let him, be, let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. Let every man abide in the same calling wherewith he was called. In other words, he's saying that if you were, if you were called into the gospel not being circumcised, then you don't have to be circumcised. If you, well, you, you see what he's saying? That's talking about circumcision, keeping in the context within which it was written. He's saying if you were called into the gospel and were not circumcised before you were called, you don't have to come in and be circumcised. But abide in the, call, in the calling that you were called into, in the state that you were called in. Abide, abide in that. <clears throat> Art thou called being a what? Servant, care not for it. But if thou mayest be made free, use it, brother. If you were called into, into bondage, if you were called as a slave, because it, because, hello. He, for he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise, also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. So he's, saying, so he's saying, even if you were a slave, that's what the servant is here. Even if you were born again as a slave, you're still free in Christ. He said, but if you're free, you're still Christ's servant. So it's the same thing. That's what he's saying. He said, but it's better to be free. <laughs> it's good to be free. Amen. E exactly. Oh, Lord, Hazel, please. <laughs> divorce, I just said, I said, if you're no longer bound, that means you can get a divorce. If you know, if, you, if you're in a situation where the scriptures declare that you are no longer bound, that means that you're, it's lawful for you to get a divorce. If the unbeliever depart, let him depart. You're no longer bound. That means you're free to divorce and marry again. Excuse me? Verse what? <laughs> Are there bound to a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Are there loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. So what is... <laughs> huh? 
No, but I'm saying if you bound to a wife, see not to believe. But now, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. That might not help him because you you cannot take a scripture out of context. You got to look at all of the circumstances. You know, because if you got a wife that departs from you, you're not you're not seeking to be loose. She has sought to be loose. You, you know what I'm saying? You're not seeking to be, be loose. If you got a spouse that leave you, that spouse is seeking to be loose from you. You're not seeking to be loose from them. And that's why God took, took the penalty off of you. You said, if they depart, let them go. They don't believe what you believe anyway. Notice why he said that. He told you why he said it. He said, because God called us to peace. So if they're not pleased to, be, to dwell with you, you, he, God is saying, you'd rather live in the house with all that antagonism, all of that, that, that spirit of Satan coming up against the spirit of Christ. He said, I, I don't, I'm not going to force you to live with that. If they want to leave, let them leave. You're no longer bound. Now you can marry someone that's saved or, or stay single. It's up to you. Whatever you want to do, you're free. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know what? I'll never mention marriage no more in this church. Cause y'all, you know, cause you, once you mention marriage, we you gonna you ain't gonna preach on nothing else that night but marriage. Glory to God. We we do need to understand it though. The church needs to understand God's laws on marriage, because um, people are people are in situation. But see, all I can tell you is. Don't use the word as a cloak. Don't use it as a cloak to do what you want to do. Because if you're in a, in a marital situation, like this scripture says, if you got a wife, don't seek to be the, the looser. If, 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 you know, don't, don't just decide, well, I'm saved, now I'm getting rid of her. Glory to God. <laughs> you know, don't do that. If, if she depart, let her go. Now you're free. But don't just kick the woman to the curb because you got saved. You know, that's what he's saying. But if she decide to walk down the curb, and, you know, he said, now you, do, you, you got two choices. You can sit there and wait on her to come back and come back a bigger devil than she was when she left. <laughs> that's possible. Or you can marry again. You can divorce her and marry someone else. Now that's God's law, I, that's, that's the law for the church. You understand what I'm saying? So now my, what was my point? Y'all done made me lose my whole point. My whole point was agreeing with God. Agreeing with God. Being, being equal with God means that you agree with him. You agree with God. You agree with him. And how do you agree? You agree with what the scriptures say. You don't have to twist it, turn it, you know, like it's, a, like it's, like it's a dough. You know, a big thing of dough that you guys make that dumplings out of? All that dough, you got to twist it and turn it and make it fit your circumstance or fit your emotions or fit your desires. God said, when you do that to my word, you pervert my word, I cannot deliver. I cannot sanction that. Because your testimony is going to be, oh, God, you know, God did it. I said he was going to do it. He did it. God said, no, I won't. I'm not going to do that. Not based upon that. Not based upon a lie. I'm not going to sanction a lie now. You're not going to make a lie out of me. I'm not going to do anything that's contrary to my word. So if that, if, if, if so when I, when I learned this lesson years ago, saints, I learned this lesson way back before BT. Honey, if you want God to move, get an agreement with him. Get in agreement with God. If you want God to move in your life, don't you ever use God's word against him. Don't ever take God's word and finagle it and twist it and turn it and put it, in, put it in to where it fits your emotion or your desire. God will not sanction that. He will not pervert his word. You know why? He said he watch over his word to protect it. He said the heavens and the earth will pass away, but his word is gonna stand. 
and his word will always be pure. It will always be pure. God's word has no shadow of turning in it. You know what that means? You can always trust what it says. You can always trust it. I remember saying to a preacher that was in this ministry, he preached apostolic order better than I did. Then he departed from it. And when, and when he departed from it, I said to him, I said to God, and I told him the same thing, this man. I said, God, if you bless that, that's down the street there, I, I, I throw in the towel. I, I don't preach no more because I don't have a message. That means I can't trust what you say. If I can look in that church and see you, if I can see you blessing that, I don't have a message. I can't trust nothing you say. I throw in the towel. And I told that preacher, I said, I am so confident in God's word. Apostolic order. This is when God really confirmed it in my heart. I am so confident that there's no way God is going to bless this movement you in. He's not going to bless your church. He's not going to bless you in this. I buried the man. I buried him. And before I buried him, he had no church. And in 15 years or more, there was nobody there but his mama, sister, whatever, for 10 years. And then the last, next five or six years, nobody had no church at all. And then God took him. I buried him. I buried him. Let me tell you something. I have never, ever. Why do you think I preach like I do? Why do you, see, you don't understand something about Dr. Banks. I am confident in what this says. You cannot come up against my stance in this and win. You cannot. When I stand on the word, it's a solid foundation. Don't you know that's where I'm trying to take you? I'm trying to get you to a place where you are not shaken and moved by every wind and doctrine that come along. You got to stand on the word. God sent an example to you. I guess I'm one of your examples. That you stand on the word of God. When you don't have nothing up to stand on, you stand on this. You stand on this. This will hold you. This will prove itself. This word has a life of its own, and you're not going to change it. You're not going to change this, because if you can change this, I can't trust it. If this will do what you say it do, I can't trust it, and nobody else can. But you can trust what God say. He say, in him is no shadow of turning. So I can look at you and prophesy according to knowledge. I can say, God is not going to back it up. God, if God backed that up, he, he just didn't kill me. He'd kill you. He'd kill all of us if he back up a lie. And God will not be found a liar. God say, this right here? He said, this I exalt above my name. Come on. He said, I exalt this above my name. One. You can't change him. You can't change this. He and his word are one. So if <laughs> why do you think Dr. Banks preached like she do? I'm confident. I, I know what this is gonna produce. When I came to Jamaica two and a half years ago, you know what God said to me to get me down here when he was sending me down here? He said, Go to Jamaica and strengthen my people. I said, Primus, the word has come from God. He said, for me and you to go to Jamaica and strengthen his people. Are you strengthened? 
Amen. You, and you know why? What did I do? What did I do? What did I do, though? It wasn't nothing but what? The Word of God. I didn't bring nothing with me but a Bible. That's all I brought was a Bible. All I did every service was open this. And it strengthened you. I can trust this. I can trust this to produce a son of God. I can trust this to do what God said it'll do. I can trust this. Are y'all hearing God? That's how I want you to be. I want you to be so confident. I don't want you to look at me and say, ooh, I wish I was like that. No, you are like that. You, it just stand on this. Stand on this word, don't, and, 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 and don't rely on anybody else's spirituality. Get your own. Get your own spirituality. Open it up, read it for yourself, study to show yourself approval. Workmen that need not be made ashamed. Don't rely on my spirituality. Don't, don't, don't rejoice in the fact that you got an apostle that knows the word, honey. You got to know it because you're going to get in some situations where the apostle's not there. Come on. And I'm not going to be able to do anything. So I want you to know the word. I want to be able to sit back and relax. And, and, and I want to say, uh, Pauline, come on up here and teach this. this, this. I want, let, me, let me hear from you tonight. I want to hear you. I want to hear where you are in God. Let me get some increase out of what you got. You understand what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I, you got to know this word because this is your life. Jesus said man does not live by bread alone but by every Every what? Word that come from the mouth of God. Every word. Every word. See, see, I find out something. I can trust this. Man, this right here? Yes. You ain't gonna move me off of this. This 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 is my life. And th and this th and, and, and what I got with this right here, Chandra, this ain't no intellect. I've eaten the book, and I find that it is sweet. Hallelujah. Even the things that's supposed to be bitter, they sweet to the soul. Oh yeah, honey, my spirit, my spirit was built on this word of God. It was built on the word of God, and that's what sustains it. Glory to God. This is my life, and that's what it's got to be to you. It's got to be your life. It's got to be everything that you think about. It's got to be everything you eat. It's got to be. It's got to be more important than your very life itself. This right here, because this is who we really are. We are the Word of God made flesh. Amen. Come on and clap your hands and tell Him thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm finished. I'm finished. You guys already got. Y'all have danced all night. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. I'm, I'm, I'm finished. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> yes. Praise you, Jesus. Mega Mart. Oh. 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 <laughs> we say that. <laughs> they open 24 hours now? Praise you, Jesus. Okay. Those of you that are online, Mega Mart is open for 24 hours a day. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Saints, are you blessed tonight? Amen. Amen. I, I love to talk about the Word of God. You know, when I'm sick, the Word revives me. I was so sick before I came out here tonight. That's why my, my, my doctor and I were in there just talking. But, we, but you know what his diagnosis was? He, st he asked, started asking me a question about the Word. <laughs> and I started talking and got healed <laughs> while I was talking. They set me up. This, this doctor right here. Yeah, cunning and crafty. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Dr. Leverett. Praise the Lord. Let's give God a great applaud for what he's done tonight. Amen. Amen.